Today's question was submitted by a community member. If you have a question about DaVinci Resolve, you can come over to our Facebook group, ask your question, and someone in the community will answer it. But with that being said, let's get started. So the question that was asked, they wanted to know why when they manipulate one image, why it's affecting the other image within their node tree. And let me build up pretty much how they said that they had their node tree. So let's say that we have two here and we'll just view both of these up here. And let's just change the colors quick. And what they were saying is that they had one image over the other and a merge like this, okay? So I have this as the foreground and then this one as the background indicated by the colors. And if you don't know which is the foreground, which one's the background, you just hover over right here. And then down in the corner there, you'll see that one says background and then up here, this one says foreground. It's pretty much the yellow and the green. Depending on which node you're using, yellow and green does get interchanged with different types of inputs. But for a merge, that's how they always show up. So let me just grab a uh, shape here just to cut this. So pretty much what they were saying is that this foreground image, whatever it is, for now it's just a flat color, but they wanted to manipulate it. And what they were saying is that they were do using contrast. So if I just come in here and I add this node in, this is just a color corrector. It has a bunch of different settings, but what I'm going to do is I'm feeding in this circle and I'm going to manipulate its contrast. For this, it doesn't really make much sense, but you'll see what happens here. Once I uh, change this, you'll see that this merge here is now the green is brighter, but then this background is getting darker. So as you can see, the more I do it, that that happened. Even if let's say we have um, some fire in here. So let me just connect up this fire into here. We'll have that same sort of thing where I am manipulating the contrast on this merge and the only input is this image but it's affecting this background color and the reason why it's doing that is because the color corrector is doing the whole image so if i bring this up here what we can see is that this image is 1500 by 1373 so when it comes into here it's coming into here, it's manipulating the 15, 13, 73, right? So now there's a couple of problems with this. I guess a lot of people that are coming into this, what you're gonna be thinking is, oh, I just wanna manipulate here. I wanna make this more, you know, I want this to pop more. So, you know, that's how it was. It's looking kind of dull and you add a little bit more contrast to get it to pop a little bit more, but it's affecting that outside image. So what it's actually doing is it's doing the whole image here, not just the visible bit. So if I'm just looking at the image itself here, and if we look down at the bottom there, we can see that we have all these different color values, right? We have the alpha as a one, cause it's, you know, th there's no transparency there. And then we have all the different, as we move this around, we have all these different color values, right? When we come over here, we have all zeros, right? And what we're doing is we're taking this whole image, all of this data, we're piping it into this color corrector. Now, Let's view this color corrector. We have all of those values, right? But then when we come over here, we have negative values. Quick side note, you would only experience this type of behavior with a more accurate color bit depth, such as 16 float or 32 float per channel. So it's coming into here and it's taking all of these and it's reducing them, right? So there's an easy way to fix this. We would just take our, um, image and we can pipe it in the mask over here. So now it's coming in as a mask, right? And now we have, we're stating what we want to be adjusted. So let's actually take a look at our mask settings. So over here, the mask, right? We have it set on crop and it's using the alpha channel. So the, the crop itself is depending on that alpha channel. And because we had all zeros here, we now have a nice crop for the data in which that we're going to be manipulating here and pass over here. Additionally, what we could do is we could also take this and bring it into here and do the same exact thing. Now what's happening here is it's coming in with all these crazy values on the sides here, as you can see down there. But then when it's coming into here, the only data that we're using from here is anything that this current node has 
as a one, not a zero. So it comes into here and then here we also have the same um, setting set. Now you can do a couple of different ways in which to set up that crop, depending on how you're bringing everything together. Some of the other ones are useful, but by default, the default one is kind of, you know, the most used because that's what fixes most problems. So that's kind of how we would do this. Now, there is another thing which you might not be able to notice here. So I'm just going to recreate this over here so we can actually see this. So if I bring this over here, right? And I come into here and I just add in a color corrector and then I move my contrast up, right? To get that contrasty uh, bit here. And I could also then take this and bring this, oops, bring this into our mask, which is the blue. And now we're getting that effect. Now that works perfectly fine. But what happens in between the space that isn't a one or a zero? So let's take this node and add a bit of softening and take a look at it now. Now, if you look at this, if you've done much with compositing in the past, what you'll notice is that we now have this like weird, you know, haze ish thing going here, but we're in 32 bit. Now this is something you see with eight bit and this might be over a lot of people's heads, but um, 32, you shouldn't see this darkening between because in reality, if we take a look at this, we're not really darkening it. We're, we have a bright color and we're putting it over top of this other bright color. And that's where, when we come into here, we're going to do uh, pre divide and then post multiply. And normally this would be a bunch of other nodes added in, but they've made it really easy where you just click one button and it does those other calculations for you. And now we, our image, is calculating correctly and we don't have that dark bit going around the outside because all we really did is just added a softness here now if you were working in 8-bit you would still see that but because we're, we're we're working in 32 we won't notice that if everything is done correctly so we would actually be able to come in and do that here as well so we see that and then down in here there might be a little bit i'm not exactly sure but we can add that in and you can see that little bit of darkness that's right there. It uh, gets rid of it as well as over here. And I guess this would be the sun side anyways. So that's kind of how we would we would manipulate that. I haven't really gone into a lot of compositing. It seems like most of the community really wants to do the motion graphics stuff. And over this next month, I'm actually going to be diving deep into building a whole bunch of other stuff. But I did have a question on this. Hopefully this answered his question. If you do have a question, you can come over to the Facebook group. The link is in the description. Ask your question there. A member of the community should be able to help you out. But with that being said, my name's JR and thanks for watching. Bye.